Hi, I'm George, and I'm here to bring you another double E video. So, this problem is another problem from IC Design 1, and we're going to be uh, choosing transistor sizes that give us a, a parallel resistance from the output to VDD and to ground. So, how are we going to do this? Alright, first, notice that we're given the values for one transistor, so we don't have to worry about choosing, eh, you know, what's our baseline, where are we going to start? We have one transistor, and we're going to use that to determine the equivalent pull-up and pull-down network uh, sizes. So, keep in mind that with the technology that we're using here, as far as, uh, as, far as the course that I'm working with goes, our PMOS resistances equal, um, what is it, a uh, 2R over K and our NMOS resistances are just R over K. So keep that in mind while we kind of work through this. Let's take a look at what we've got here. Now our DP MOS transistor right here has a width to length ratio of 4 to 1 so that gives us a K value of 4. And that means that if we stick it into our equation we get 2R over 4 equals R over 2. What does that mean? That means that our pull-up network has to have a total value because you'll notice that there's D goes straight to VDD and straight to the output. There's nothing else there. That is the value of the pull-up network. That's what everything on that has to be because as you know, every leg in, let's say we have something else out here, every leg that's parallel to VDD has to have the same value to produce the same, the same, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The same, uh, like, delay, well, the same worst case delay between uh, VDD and, and the output. The same applies to the ground side. Everything down here, every parallel path, has to have a value of R over 2. We know this. It's just, it's just because this transistor has that value, therefore every other path will need to have that value. So, how are we going to find this? Well, it's super simple. Now, we have three transistors. We know that they have to have a total resistance from the output to VDD of R over 2. So, we're just going to set up an equation. We know that R over 2, the value that we want, is equal to three transistors times the equivalent resistance of each transistor 2R over K and all we have to do is solve for K bring K up, bring R down, bring R up so we end up with K is equal to let's see you know what, instead of doing the math in my head I'll just go ahead and write it down that is uh, 6, so 2 times 6R over R which is equal to 12. Therefore, with a K value of 12, we know that our width to length ratio of every single one of these PMOS transistors needs to be 1 over 12. That's it. So, that's the answer for the PMOS half. Let's go ahead and look at the NMOS side now. Now, notice on the NMOS side, we have three paths to uh, ground from the output. We have a path here, a path here, and a path here. Now notice that we only have one transistor on each parallel leg of the lower part of that of that path. That means that every single one of these needs to have the same resistance, the same equivalent resistance. Also, D is in series with all three of them. So what we can essentially do is say that this one will be the same as this one will be the same as this one and just arbitrarily choose one transistor put it in series with D and we have our equivalent circuit which looks like this where our output is here our ground is here this is D and this is A or B or C they're not parallel, they're not combined we're just arbitrarily choosing one of them because all of them will be the same. Now, we're going to go ahead and do the same math. We know that for this entire leg, we need a resistance of R over 2. So, we're going to set that equal to 
two transistors times the NMOS equivalent resistance, which is just R over K. The math here is even easier. We solve for K, and we get K is equal to 2 over 2, R over R, equals... Two, 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 two. I apologize, that is 2 times 2, which is equal to 4. Therefore, the width to length ratio of our NMOS transistors is equal to 1 over 4. So, PMOS, NMOS. And let's think about this. We'll go ahead and come back up here. We will redraw our circuit for the second part. So, this is 12 to 1, 12 to 1, 12 to 1. And it looks like I may have written these backwards. It's not one unit long and 12 units wide. It's 12 units wide and one unit long. I apologize for the mistake. I'm sure if any of you have been uh, in your IC design class, you probably caught that before I did. Now, there's nothing that says that the width of D has to be the same as the width of A, B, and C. We simply chose values that, that work this way to, uh, to make the math simple. But the, it's, it's entirely possible to choose a value of D that is something else and then use that to determine A, B, and C. But in our case, we just have a, a ratio of 4 to 1, 4 to 1, 4 to 1, and 4 to 1. Now let's take a look at what B is asking us. Now, it's asking us to find the input patterns that produce the longest propagation delays for the pull-up and the pull-down networks. So, we're going to go ahead and start by looking only at the pull-up network. And you can see these PMOS transistors here. You can infer by looking at the circuit that this delay will be less than this delay, simply because you have three transistors in series. They're wider, however, because each one has to, tur has to uh, turn on in sequence, more or less, they will take longer to propagate from VDD to the output than, than D will. So we're going to find the delay for this equivalent circuit. Let's go ahead and draw. I'm just going to go straight to the RC model. We have our first resistor, our second equivalent resistor, third equivalent resistor. There's our output. We have one equivalent capacitance, another equivalent capacitance, a third equivalent capacitance. Now, we also have to consider the other equivalent capacitances in the circuit. So, attached to the output, you also have D on the PMOS side and D on the NMOS side. These are, these are adjacent to the output, which means that you'll also have capacitances for them. Just like that. So what are these capacitances? Now we know that for A, B, and C, or for actually for any transistor, for any PMOS or NMOS transistor, C, the capacitance, is going to be equal to K times C. So this is 12, 12, 12, and they're all multiplied by C. This is 4C, and this is also 4C. Now, what are the resistances? That is going to be equal to, because it's PMOS, 2R over K. So in the case of 12, or 12 to 1 ratio, it's going to be 6R. I apologize. It's 1 over 6R. Let's go ahead and do the algebra. 2R over 12 equals R over 6. So, R over 6, R over 6, R over 6. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to consolidate all these parallel capacitors. And I'll go ahead and turn this guy around because we're dealing with... with you know, the switching the, the switching currents, we're just going to go ahead and assume that our VDD is ground. And we'll redraw this as... This is R over 6. We have our first parallel capacitance. This is 12C. Same deal. R over 6. And again... However, on this 
on this third equivalent capacitance, we need to add together these three, which ends up being 12 plus 4, 4 plus 4. That is 20C. So all we have to do now is calculate our Elmore delay, which we do by looking across this resistor and everything downstream from this node, R over 6 times, and I'm just going to go ahead and add these up in my head, 12, 24, 44, plus this second R over 6, because we're continuing to the output, which is right here, combined with every capacitor that's downstream from this node, right there, which is going to be R over 6 times 12 plus 20, which is 30, 32C, plus R over 6, because we're now we're crossing this capacitor to everything downstream from here, which is just our final output capacitance, which is 20C. Add all these together, we're going to factor out our R over 6. We end up with R over 6 times 44 plus 32. This guy is 4567, 4566 plus 20. That is 96C. We divide 96 by 6. Let's go ahead and pull out a calculator for that. And I don't know if uh, any of you have Android phones, but you can have you can pull pull up a nice uh, handy dandy TI-89 calculator on an uh, Android phone. It's a uh, one sixth times 96 equal to 16. So our answer is 16 RC for the pull up. There's our pull up half. Let's go ahead and look at the pull down network now. Coming back to the circuit, you can see that all three of these paths are I mean, they're they're symmetrical. You have you first have here. And I'll go ahead and erase these because we know that they're all the same. You first you have this uh, resistor in, or this transistor in series, but then you cra move across all three of these and they're all the same. But they're not. Now, this... Doing the math, it doesn't matter which path you choose, they're all going to be the same. However, if you think about this as far as moving from the schematic to the layout, if this circuit was laid out exactly as it is in the schematic, and your first transistor is, cl is physically closer to C than it is to B or A, and A is your most distant from this node, physically distant, then essentially you're going to have the largest loss over this, we'll call it a transmission line. Therefore, this delay will actually be, going from here to here, slightly higher than the other two. So we'll just go ahead and call our answer D to A, We'll do the math, we'll draw our equivalent, our equivalent circuit, understand that mathematically they'll all come out to be the same using this model that we're using, but that's kind of the reason why you can say that the delay from D to A to ground will be greater than the other two paths. So, again, I'm going to go straight to our, to our RC model. So there's our output Y. We come down. We have our first equivalent resistance, second equivalent resistance. We have ground. We have our first capacitance right here, second capacitance. And I should actually move my output over here, because now we have to talk about our other equivalent capacitances. Now, this is the current path. This is the current path. Those get resistors because you have the, the current actually being attenuated by some kind of but as it travels through the transistors. However, and let me erase these for emphasis, this transistor, this transistor, they're, they're both still attached, they're both still physically adjacent to the current path, so you have to consider their equivalent capacitances. Additionally, the same is true for these two, because they're physically adjacent to this. So, we're looking here, if this is D and this is A, we have additional capacitances that need to go here and additional capacitances that need to go there. So let's take a look at what they are. So we have B and C. 
they're they're both the same kind of transistor or the both the same kind of uh, transistor. So we'll just go ahead and stick them right here to show that they're on the same node. So drop my pen. So this node here is represented right there. All those equivalent capacitances. Now looking at the output. So we cross D and we have our equivalent capacitance from D, but we need to look at the D PMOS and the C PMOS. So, and because they're PMOS, I'll draw them facing up. There we go. And so what are our values? Again, you know, equals the uh, equivalent capacitance equals K. This is N MOS, so the equivalent resistance is just R over K. So what we end up with is, let's see, this is 4C. 12C, that is a 12C, not 126. This is 4C, 4C, they're all 4C. This is R over 4, R over 4. All right. So let's go ahead and consolidate our, our parallel capacitors. So that would be these three and these three. And I'm going to go ahead and build this as as a uh, Elmore delay model from the ground to the output. So R over 4, equivalent capacitance of 4A12C. R over 4, equivalent capacitance, that is a ground, of 121620C. All right, so let's go ahead and do our analysis. Starting from here, looking at everything downstream from that node, we have R over 4 times 12 plus 20, that is 32C, plus R over 4 times everything. So we're going across this guy, looking at everything downstream from here. It is just 20C. We'll go ahead and factor out our R4s. We get R over 4 times 32 plus 20, that is 62C. And we'll go ahead and pull out our trusty calculator again. 62 divided by 4 is 31 and a half. So, 31.5 RC is our answer for the NMOS, the pull down network. And that's how you can then, and that's how you handle a problem like this. If you end up with something like this on homework or on a test, uh, now you know how to do it. I hope you found this as educational as I did, and good luck.